A stunning example of the relationship between males and females when it comes to this rational and emotional logic is a video entitled, It's Not About the Nail, which you can find on YouTube. It's just, there's all this pressure, you know? And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me and I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless and I don't know if it's gonna stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most is that I don't know if it's ever gonna stop. Yeah. Well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there. Stop would... trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing- You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. No, see, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail See, you're out. not even listening now. Okay, fine, I will listen, fine. It's just, sometimes it's like, there's this achy, I don't know what it is. And I'm not sleeping very well at all. And all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. Yeah, I, that sounds really hard. It is. Thank you. Ow! Oh, come on. Ow. If you would just don't try to see things my way. Do I have to keep on For males, it's all about the nail. That's how we function best, by our nature. For women, everything but the nail is much more pertinent to the reason as to why the conversation is happening in the first place. Said differently, for men, the point of the conversation is the point. For women, the experience generated by the conversation is much more the point. As I've said before, and we'll say again, women are the children of the adult world. This isn't to say that women are children, because simply if I wanted to say women are children, I would do like I did twice and say women are children. What I said and am saying is that women are the children of the adult world. By the same respect that there are things that children require of their parents, there are things that women will inevitably require from men. Of those various requirements, the one I will focus on, if only for a moment here, is guidance. Emotion-centric beings will navigate their life based upon how they feel. That's what makes the most sense to them. We as males, in general, guide ourselves by the ration in a situation and disregard emotions when we can. Our job isn't to get deeper and deeper into emotions, or isn't to get women to be logical. Rather, what would behoove you is to not need them to be logical the way that you are. The same way, a parent does not need their child to be logical or as knowledgeable as they are, but can facilitate the child growing into gaining their own capacity to function as such. Said differently, if you are going to have a woman in your life, not only will you inevitably end up guiding her if she wants you, but the manner in which you will do so has to be from a ration-centric premises that understands how to navigate emotional logic. Men and women communicate differently. Now, this isn't to say that one is correct or incorrect in how they communicate, or even that women don't make sense at all, which is kind of what I naturally want to say. My biggest point is that as males, you cannot exist being emotion-centric, at least not for very long or very effectively. That is not our lot in life. It's the way of nature, and if you don't like it, you can go punch a tree. We must not only strive for ourselves to maintain a ration-centric mentality, but most of all, not need women to be doing the same thing that we are doing. We are not equal. The point of this information is not to get women to be doing what men are doing. If you do your job, she'll want to do what you do anyway. Know the value of what it is that you provide in life. Then, anyone who benefits from that can quite easily be informed of that value. Better yet, don't tell them, show them.